Art supplies. Um, one of the thrilling things about being an artist is that you test loads and loads of product. But tried and true formulas and experimentation is the key to part of your success. And virtually the tools and the paints and uh, mediums that you use are essential to the longevity of your work and the beauty of your work. Um, this is where you become artist mixed with alchemy. And I just ordered some stuff and I'm going to do the unboxing here. My name is Henry Haight. I'm an artist and thank you for visiting my channel. Um, so uh, with this in, in mind, um, paints and mediums depending on acrylics, oils, solvents, and everything can be the bane of your existence because sometimes uh, if you know uh, as of recently prices of everything has gone up and good art supplies are not cheap and cheap art supplies are not good but um, one thing you can do is do tips to make your crappy paint work better and longer and so uh, this one is from Nova Color. So if you know about um, the, your type of paints that you use, uh, you probably have a particular color palettes or favorite colors or hues that you find uh, work best for you and that you are uh, the catch your eye as well as uh, show primarily predominantly in your work nothing wrong with that uh, I tend to have uh, very bright and jarring colors and um, I like things that are super flat or super impasto so uh, with Nova color paints they are extremely versatile and the first color I have here several please I'm so excited I could spit <laughs> Fluorescent green, light fastness. Check it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Next color, fluorescent blue. Um, I don't know if you can see behind me. There's uh, a painting of uh, my friend Andy, who uh, I do love fluorescent blue. Uh, next one up, uh, 197 fluorescent yellow. Uh, now this one, ooh, I do love this this color here. Uh, Nova Colors uh, Peach Tone. I love this for because it's quite versatile. Uh, a lot of skin tones and um, flushy things. Uh, I also like to use this to virtually uh, have more of a translucent effect on on my work so um it's it's lovely and you know this is a, i go through that a lot i should have gotten a bigger one um ah antique copper now this one i will do a a, a tutorial on how i oxidize um copper paints and um yeah so uh but again this took me ex experimentation and stuff and um by the way this is not a sponsored video i don't know any but at nova color so i don't blag my way in uh to this uh next one is fluorescent magenta 190. Uh, it's a beautiful color it's so pretty next in line ah um one thing i can't stress enough is to get yourself a very high quality very opaque white and i got titanium white uh this is 118 um again i should I, for some reason i don't know why i didn't fucking get normally when i get tubes i get the four ounce or the, the bigger one the next one up but if with the certain colors that i just go through a lot a lot a lot um but one thing you have to as an artist if you're starting off you want to be uh mindful of write-off you know write-off is product that you use uh, when making a piece of work, but then it just virtually, it's like not overspill or it's just wasted. 
that if you put too much out of takes too much out of container or a tube and virtually your imagination is much bigger than your eyes and your brush so um that can it can actually get expensive so for something like that i would suggest that you virtually get a good titanium archival solid white that can be mixed with other colors to virtually make your arsenal of work go much farther and just you know built to last can't go wrong with that one next up drum roll please 142 blue green oh this is a beautiful color so yeah um okay now this is this is what i call season in the cabbage um this is slow dry matte liquid um I like to mix this um, with the next one, acrylic retarder. Now I use several acrylic retarders. I use Nova Colors, I also use Goldens, and um, I got two acrylic retarders. Because um, normally with these, like I said, I, I go through a lot and um, I normally mix them in pre-mixed 50-50 uh, or depending on the consistency of what I want to use. Um, within the work or the the desired effect within the paint um, it helps uh, mix it sometimes with a bit of water and mwah, excellent um, next in my uh, Played full to arsenal here. I got Modern Masters Metal Effects uh, Patina Oxidizing Kit. Um, I do, <laughs> I do uh, tend to use um, instead of watering the plants, I water my paintings. Uh, but um, I tend to do that with much like uh, Warhol's oxidized piss paintings. Um, I do love the patina effect, um, and with this, I plan to use this for two pieces of work, um, but I do like to use the Modern Masters Patina kit. Um, this is a little one, so I was just like, I think it was like 23 bucks, whatever, but. Um, one of my gripes about uh, being in this area is that art supplies, good art supply shops, um, can be a little frustrating um i know people are like oh I like blick and so like i said i'm not a, a sponsored video but just from um you know blick has some cool stuff and you know there are a lot of independent art supply stores but with you know super stores like walmart and amazon virtually cutting the middleman out and making independent shops harder to operate a brick and mortar stop um I like going into an art supply store, much like a record store, because my my head starts to explode and I just want to like, I want everything or well, things that I'm going to use. There's no point in buying crap that I'm not going to use and just like, and I've been guilty of that. I think a lot of artists are that you think, oh yeah, it'd be cool to use that. And like, it's just sitting there like saying, hey, remember me? Um, but uh, yeah, um, you know, I, I, I'm finicky about the certain products and I will try to mix high and low and see what goes. Um, when I moved away, uh, when I moved some of my, out of my uh, studio in Hackney, um, I had a light accident where I left uh, a container of brushes, m m a lot of paddle brushes on a uh, stove top and somehow um, in my stress-induced moving and manic uh, moving around caught fire and I lost about ooh, um, several thousand dollars worth of brushes there were two large containers with you know uh, boar hair brushes and synthetic oils and just paddle but just like um, about I would say about 10 years a brush the my good good like large paddle brushes and this one is a solvent proof uh chip pure bristle uh this is a three inch and i got this for a pretty good deal i think this is like three bucks um 
These I go through a lot. Uh, I like these are quite versatile. Uh, this is five bucks, uh, Modern Masters, and this is a two inch. So um, what else did I go? Ooh, this one was a little more pricier. Uh, this is a Royal Langnickel MR43F. Uh, um, versatile number 12 brush. Check it out. Woo! Uh, yeah, I love this brush. Um, gonna use the fuck out of that. Um, I was working on a painting and I realized I ran out of yellow okra. And I'm like, I fucking have pretty much most of the colors, but no yellow okra. So I got a tube of Gamblin, um, 1980. I know some people are like, Gamble is the best, and, you know, I'm like, I, I'll use anything, but um, I tend to like some of their stuff. Uh, I also like uh, Old Holland and, you know, Windsor Newton, you know, uh, but, uh, I, but I can be a cheap date, so, yeah, if it works, it works. I use it, and it's like, you know. Um, cool. These I've been looking for um, and building up some uh, of my... Uh, flat with Liquitex I like their soft body um, and this is uh, Golden's so flat so this has a self leveling agent to where it will virtually be smooth as butter and this is a uh, naphth pink so um, yeah I can't wait to use that one uh, this is another so flat uh, yellow green. I like to mix this with um, some culture hustle uh, yellow and give it some pow and fucking thing looks rad. So, you know, and again, if you look at some of these, this one here is pretty opaque. So it has, you can see it has the little black box. That is a notification to let you know that essentially um, that is pretty opaque and when it has a small uh, doohickey halfway through it that means it's more translucent uh, or not as opaque and virtually you can see the coloring bars so this would have to be layered and layered but like I said that when I mix um, the culture hustle yellow or even their uh, the green screen uh, powders ooh, stand back and the last one is a so flat again, and this is a bold noir black, so basic black. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong with those. Next up is some cheap metal leaf. Um, this stuff I use along with the Modern Masters um, because uh, metal leaf or cheap gold leaf is essentially bronze and copper. Uh, pounded together and I buy some um one second ah, okay um with uh the cheap gold leaf um is a lot different than actual gold leaf because actual gold leaf um can be expensive and can vary depending on the price of gold but normally uh gold leaf that I get I normally buy from one particular uh supply in London, England called Stuart R. Stevenson. Um, that's where the queen gets her gold and her gilding supplies. But uh, if it's good enough for the queen, fucking good enough for me. Um, so you get uh, 25 sheets of this as opposed to, you can see the difference um, in this. And essentially with this, I have a small chart in my supply cabinet where I keep everything. I'd, virtually with these, um, I do tend to like these to virtually, I have a book of used uh, gold leaf uh, things. And I also have uh, my gilding brush, which I use here to pick up Um, yeah, but I'll leave a link for Stuart R. Stevenson to you check out there. Um, they're go they have different types of gold, and I tend to go for more of a uh, either a rose gold or I don't really like yellow gold too much. Um, uh, 
but if you can also see that the golds in these are actually quite similar. However, with this, you will need to actually have a protective layer to uh, protect the gold because you don't want this to tarnish over time. I see a lot of people on YouTube going, oh, you know, to put some gold leaf and essentially you have to understand that in an environment of a person's home from is going to be different than your studio. So it could get hot, it could get cold, it could be co uh, moisture, damp, whatever. Um, this can affect the final outcome of your gold leaf. And with real gold leaf, you don't have to do that. But uh, with real gold leaf, I tend to do two or three layers of this to really give that... Um, uh, Russian Orthodox Catholic religious kind of uh, iconography that I like in my work. So um, for real gold, you'll be spending about 38 pounds to 38 pounds would be roughly about uh, 50 bucks uh, for a book of five. Um, if you can get a, a wholesaler to give you ones, um, I know Sword R. Stevenson sell a book of 600 pages, which is much cheaper. But, um, yeah. Um, so with, uh, with, uh, Stuart R. Stevenson, um, they have a lot of really good gilding supplies that, um, you can, uh, I know they ship internationally, but I always make it a point, um, to go there for, for my gold. So, um, you know, but uh, I'm just going to ruin the, the gold crap and uh, the cheap shit so what do you do um i always get uh keys for uh, stretcher bars um how much are these uh a buck uh oil paints uh i use these for actual body um when i'm doing impasto work so i just like i don't really care i'm just gonna mix them with uh liquid impasto and get to build up the the body with my spatula knives, um, or palette knives. Uh, this is uh, lemon yellow. Um, this one is okay, but um, what I do with this one is fluorescent pink. And uh, this one I also mix with um, uh, Culture Hustles. I will leave a link below for Culture culture hustle because they've got they've got some really cool products and i like experimenting with a lot of their stuff and you know stewart uh sample uh is is an incredible artist that I, you would as I would say check out his work it's vibrant it's youthful and what the fuck happened here it's all look like beat up what the hell Ugh. <laughs> Uh, uh just like uh, oh, oh this was six uh six bucks for this one um this was five bucks um and the last one is lamp black and again i use those for um to build up body and stuff uh you know um and with, like with oils you know you can have uh level one, level two, level three. Obviously, the higher you go, or the, within the series, the higher the series, the price will actually go up because of the pigment and the sourcing of those uh, pigments can get costly. And especially right now with the way the economy is going, you really want to make sure that you virtually make your dollar stretch so that your work can... Um, Normally when I started off, if I, you know, made a, a piece of work and I sold it, I would, you know, earmark about, you know, 60, 70 bucks to get like the stuff that I really wanted to like really uh, make my shit tight. So that's one thing I can't stress enough. But um, with, you know, a cheap level, uh, this one here is permanent light green, which I always love this, you know, this color. Um, you can see in here. Uh... Take this off, and you can see the carpet matches the drapes, people. Um, yeah, so uh, I tend to mix mix it up, but you know, with when they get to a, a certain level of things, um, you know, I've 
I would say this is more like a college student level um, and stuff. So with, within those, uh, so that is pretty much it. Oh, I forgot the big one. Gamsol. Um, I go through this a shitload, a shitload of this, and this was uh, 17, 16, yeah, because I'm wearing fucking glasses, I can't even see, so, yeah, 16 bucks for uh, this, and um, what, one thing about this, especially with like liquid and um, any kind of solvent, when you are in a, a studio, don't have an open flame, or it's like, I know some people want to get ambient and like, oh, you know, like the Dutch painters and, and stuff, and, you know, a lot of those guys are using uh, tempera and, you know, um, emulsifiers that weren't as toxic as, as, you know, painting is now. And sometimes I've, you know, um, quite stupidly been in, uh, gassed myself and just have to be very careful and make sure you have a ventilated uh room or a fan on to virtually get get the airflow and to get that, all that like chemical shit out of your room but um gamsol is you know a tried and trusted thing i do like it it's quite versatile um you know it it's just a, a go-to for me um but like when i was a makeup artist ah one more glitter uh this because i'm going to be upcycling some frames uh for this exhibition and the thing about um my work is that when i one of my primary dealers he uh, has an in-house framing service and he tends to make uh, the frame work with my art and it just looks in incredible and uh, you know uh paul uh you know he makes my shit look tight and i you know hats off to him so uh, I, I've noticed, uh, you know, art, certain artists do tend to upcycle their their picture frames, and it is one of the things that actually can make your work even go look greater or become part of the art itself. And with this show, uh, because this will be my first show in uh, a very long time here in LA, um, I plan to fucking you know make the shit rock. So uh, that's it for now. Um, so with the total of everything, uh, within this haul, I spent roughly about 204 pounds or for $204, uh, for all of this. And, um, considering this will last me a good while to, uh, use and work with and yeah, I can't wait to see it. And, um, again, you know, you don't have to go crazy with what you buy and, um, just you know be mindful of you know your favorite colors um and try to see if you could go up uh one or two splurge on yourself in some respect um and you won't go wrong you your work will last forever so um with that i would thank you for stopping by uh i hope you enjoyed yourself with this and um let me know what you think and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification notification button uh, for all the future updates. All right, guys, take it easy. <laughs> Bye.